Welcome back to Railfan on Location, where we take you wherever we happen to be filming trains today. Today we are at the Orangedale Railroad Museum in Orangedale, Nova Scotia, up on Cape Brenton. It's just a little museum here, but they've actually got a ton of really cool stuff, so I thought I'd take you guys around and give you a little bit of a look. Especially because apparently Google just decided for some reason that they're permanently closed, which they are not. So give them a little bit of publicity probably wouldn't hurt. So the uh, first item of note here, I'll take a couple steps back so you guys can see it properly, is this speeder here. It's a Fairmont speeder, I'm not exactly sure what type. Looks in a bit rough shape, but actually could be in worse condition. If we come in here, you can see it's still got some of the levers at least. It's missing what well, looks like brake and something else here. I'll see if I can find a photo in my archives of one of these that's actually assembled so you guys can see what it should look like. But unlike some of these I've seen, the windows are still both there, though this one does have a crack in it. And the engine deep in there is actually still in this and looks to me to be in pretty good shape even. Although definitely doesn't run. So for those of you who are interested in these sort of things, it's you can tell by these giant flywheels here, I think it's a hit and miss gas engine, so it's pretty old. So that's always fun. Got your gas tank on the back here. What would have once been the number board, but is now gone. It's not too eaten away by rust. Still looks to be in quite excellent shape, actually, given its age. It'd be fun for somebody to come along and make it run again. And next up here we have perhaps the most interesting item on site, which is this snowplow here. So this is a Russell snowplow. You can see its builder's plate right here. Built in... Uh, it doesn't actually say. But it's steel. I think these were built... Ooh... Actually, I don't know early 19... middle 1900s, I think? So the way these work, for those of you who don't know, is basically you've got the wings here, which are hydraulically activated so they can spread out to push more snow off the track. Then you've got a flanger blade right in here, which can dro actually drop down between the rails, so this can bust ice out of the way and stuff like that, though you do have to be careful, because drop it down over a grade crossing and you bust out your grade crossing, which is bad. And then obviously you've got the main wedge plow up front that you can use to plow the track even if the confines are too tight to expand the wings there. And even more luckily, we got here while the museum was open and they've allowed us to go inside of it, which appears to just be standard if the museum's open. And it's actually really, really nice inside. This is perhaps one of the nicest plows I've ever been in, and I've been in quite a few. This is like the third one. Most of the stuff in here is still in here. So I believe this is a stretcher. So if somebody was injured, they could use it to get them out, because these would be out in terrible conditions. And part of that would be these, which I believe are supposed to duplicate fuses. And what these were, were basically if you were in trouble, you could set one off. And the idea would be then there's like a giant glowing red thing that A, alerts other people and makes sure you're not going to get hit by another train. So if you saw a fuse on the railroad, you'd stop. Now you can tell it's out in wintertime because there's one cast iron stove here. And if you go in here, there's another cast iron stove. So this would have been very well heated. Another interesting thing is the brake wheel here is inside of the car instead of outside off the back end like you often see. Because in plows, this way you could do it from inside the car where it'd be nice and warm. Now, this latch here should be engaged to stop the brake wheel from turning, but it is loose. But the whole thing's rusted shut, so it doesn't really matter. Now, up here, this is where you'd control the plow from. There wasn't a motor in one of these. This would be pushed by another engine. And you'd have this lovely view out the front. 
and a bit of a view out the back so your engine will be coupled on back there. Now the controls that you have in here are you'd have this ice cutter which I believe is the flanger control. So this would use hydraulics from the train air brakes to raise and lower it. You'd have your emergency valve for purging the air brake system if you needed to in an emergency. And you'd have your wing in, wing out controls here which were again hydraulic. You'd have your brake line, signal line, and air reservoir controls. And it looks like you could have two operators in here. So you could have one operator over here and one over here. Because this one also has the wing in and out control and the emergency valve. Interestingly, there's only an ice cutter on here, and it's definitely not been removed here because there's no plumbing for it. You got your little windshield wipers on here, I guess, to keep the snow out. I don't know what this is for because it's not hooked up to anything besides an air brake chamber, but my suspicion is this was the whistle pull cord. So you'd have an air whistle mounted right up here. I'll see if I can find it when we head back out of this. And these big drums here, I believe, are the air compressed, compressed air drums, excuse me. So this would be what would power all the pneumatics on everything. I, mean, I think they probably fed off of the air brake line, but I don't know this. You got this interesting thing here, which appears to be official CNR for how to run this. And another one over here. I'm definitely not an expert on these things, but what I'm saying here is my understanding of how they work from being in quite a few of these. So from here, we'll move on over to the next thing, which is this little diesel engine here. So I believe this is a 45 ton or engine, although you often see them with side rods. This one does not have those. It's got a builder's plate here. Built April 1956, does not have the weight on it, so we can't be 100% sure. Now, the cab in this is actually in pretty good shape. You can't go in it, unfortunately. But, still got train brake, air brake for the engine, and engine brake, which would be manual brake shoes, and you got air brake, excuse me, and then you'd have your throttle. Looks like most of the gauges are still in it. I see the bell lever still in it, whistle, sander. It's actually pretty good. I've seen these in a lot worse shape. It might actually be in the nicest condition out of anything here. Definitely hasn't run in a while. If you watched our other walkthrough video of a yard, we visited 44 tonner in that one and pointed out that the way you can tell if one of these is run is the amount of soot built up on that cab. And the cab is rusty, so clearly hasn't run in a while. Interestingly, just get down from this car here. It is lettered for the Railroad Museum. I don't know if it ran for them at one point. And another thing that would be a little sketchy if it was in operation, but it's out of service right now, is this pin here. So this pin should sit in the box like this and it locks out the jaw, the knuckle, this part here so that it doesn't move. It's raised and lowered by this bar here. In this case it's just sitting loose in it because it's not able to slot into the slot. If you were to start this up and move it, it'd probably settle in, but it doesn't really need to be in here because it's not going anywhere. There's also some bent stuff on the handrails here. So clearly it's been sitting for a while. Next thing up is this boxcar here. There's not too much to say about this one. It's just kind of your standard boxcar. It's for the Cape Brenton Development Corporation, it looks like. I don't know if it was used to haul equipment, or what it was used for here. There's unfortunately no signage, so I don't really know. It does have solid bearings, so it's gotta be fairly old, because those were made illegal, ooh, I wanna say in the 50s, 60s, it was somewhere in there. 
And then at least for rolling stock, which is really all I'm qualified to talk about, if you can call it qualified, the last thing of note is this caboose here. So this is an old CNR Canadian National wooden caboose. Again, not... It's actually in better shape than it looks like. The paint's fading, but otherwise it's okay. It's still riding on the original trucks, which is nice, because sometimes for these ones they will swap them out with freight car trucks, which are easier to find, but you can tell they're caboose trucks because this right here is a leaf spring, so it makes your ride a lot softer. So if you're riding in this car, it's way nicer to have these than a normal truck. I'll find one over here on the box car. These coil springs, which don't really, I mean, they do cushion it, but they don't cushion it all that much. While we're here on the box car, by the way, I just noticed this. The brake is not actually applied on this, so I guess it's just kind of being held in place by a rust. I mean, I'm sure the brakes are applied on that engine. It's still got pretty much all the fittings, actually all of them as far as I can see. Handrails and stuff. It is wooden, so, I mean, solid bearings. We already know it's pretty old. Wooden, this is really old. I have seen a nicer one of these. I've also seen some that were a lot less nice, but I'll put in a photo of, again, what these would look like if this one was fully restored. It's also got the old logo on it. This is CNR replaced this logo a long time ago, but because these wooden cabooses are so old, you still see it. I believe this one was retired in the 40s, I was told. Used as a bunkhouse, I think. So again, we can go up inside this one, so I'll just take you on a quick tour here. Again, quite nice inside. So you've got, when you come in right through the door here, you're at the cupola end. So this is what your cupola looks like. So this is where, for those of you who don't know, the brakeman and conductor would have rode in the caboose on a freight train normally, because it was nicer than riding up at the engine. So they would have done paperwork in here, and from this cupola here, they could have monitored the entire train. So you got these nice window seats that you can see over the entire train down the length of the track. And you've also got over here, in the case of an emergency, a brake. So in the case of an emergency, as it says here, the conductor could use this to apply brakes onto the train and stop it if for whatever reason the engineer couldn't. These seats are frozen in place. I've been on some, been on all kinds actually, and even older one of these where the seats are actually wood slats and they flip forward and back. I think I got a video of that in the files somewhere. I'll throw it up here. But yeah, these don't do anything fancy like that. They don't swivel or anything. But in pretty nice shape here. Get down carefully. I think there should be rungs on this side, but there's not anymore. Also, I don't know if you remember the fuses from earlier, but here's some more of them. So the conductor had some so he could signal the train was in distress if he needed to. And then down through here, this would have been the crew's home away from home or their living space. So they would have had a bed here if they needed it, which you can see stacked up on the wall. Kind of like a, like a bench kind of thing in here. Don't actually know what that was for. It might have been a stretcher. I don't know. If anybody knows, you can... Uh, Put it down in the comment section, I'd be interested to know. And then you've got your stove here, and this was not only for heating, but this was also for cooking in. So you could actually cook on this one. You got your sink over here. And that's about it for this one, it looks like. Now, for those of you who are interested in paperwork, <laughs> this is the stats on the caboose. So, oh, so refurbished in 43, um, retired in the 80s, I guess, I think probably was taken out of revenue service in the 40s and then just kept around in the 80s. I don't know, though. Again, if anybody knows, please let me know. And there's uh, regulations for sanitation and mobile work camps here. 
There's all the equipment that you would expect to find on a caboose like this that they'd have for emergencies or just hanging around because this was kind of where the crew would live if they were on a train. And then right here, I've talked about solid bearings a bit, but this is why they were banned. It's a hot box fire. So basically, and I'll throw up a photo here because I actually took one, actually it was off of another wooden caboose sitting on Prince Edward Island uh, in a bit worse shape, but also with solid journal bearings. And basically you just had a, like a, a drum inside of there, the wheel axle, and then you just had what was called solid waste. So it was, I believe it was paper products, or maybe cloth products, I can't remember. But that would be put in there, filled to the brim with oil, and that was your lubrication. But as you can imagine, that spinning axle could cause friction, which would build up into heat, and it would start a fire. So that was a hot box fire. So eventually they put roller bearings into these, and that, I mean, A, makes them roll smoother, they're more reliable, also a lot less likely to catch on fire, although even today there are things called hot box detectors that when a train goes past, check if any of the bearings are on fire. That's about all for rolling stock. Uh, there are some cool buildings here, although I'm not super confident to talk about them. There's this freight house here. Down there, there's a station and something else. I'll throw up photos of each of them so you guys can take a look. But again, not really going to want a different video if those are your thing, I'm afraid. I'm, I just don't know much about them. But yeah, that's about all for this video, it looks like. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you're ever in the area, again, this is in uh, Nova Scotia, up on Cape Breton. So if you're ever on Cape Breton, this place is definitely worth a visit. Got a bunch of cool stuff here, and looks like it's a bit it's a bit off the road, so they could use a lot more attention. So yeah, if you're in the area, be sure to stop on by. I highly recommend it. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. It's completely free to you, but helps me out a ton. As always, thank you for watching, and thanks to all of you who've been following this series as we've been going along with it. Thank you all, and have a great day.